Hello! Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Naturally, like myself, I hope you've had a great Christmas. Christmas is over and we're steaming now towards New Year's Eve and 2023. As you're probably aware, the weather is horrendous outside. As I live in the UK, like 98%, that's very uh, specific, I know, but I can tell, 98% of the people that watch my videos are from the UK, so we are all experiencing bad weather at the moment. This time of year is the time of year where I'd like to get out fishing and film a few videos for you. As I've just mentioned, the weather is horrendous. So I just thought I'd pop back on and maybe do something that quite a lot of you may like, some of you might not like, but I'm gonna go back over all the footage I've got from 2022, which is the first year of me filming here on YouTube. Put it all together and make a special, really. My plan is to look back over the footage that I've kept from all my filming over 2022 on Chesil Beach. As you know, I've been there every week. I actually missed two weeks, but I've done three or four more sessions than what I should have, so I'm probably two or three up on my yearly or my weekly visit to Chesil. That I will continue in 2024. As you know by now, I take you to Norway. We're going in less than a week. We're off to Norway again, so that's gonna be fun. And I like to take you to the Bristol Channel down the South Coast. And I've got much more of that plan for 2023. So, as I mentioned, I should be out filming for you. So this is a little intro to a 2022 special. I've not edited it or even done it yet, so I don't know how it's gonna go, but I'm just gonna plan it like a normal video. So I'm gonna go on, I'll do an intro. We might add two or three intros from maybe Chesil and somewhere else. We'll do some baiting up. I'll do some riggings, rigging up. I'll show you some different rigs. Hopefully get a few bikes on camera. I'm sure if I look back through the footage, once upon a time I did used to catch fish. No, it's been all right. We've been catching fish. It's just been hard the last few weeks. Yeah, bites, winding in fish, showing you fish, which is nice. Unhooking fish, eating fish maybe, or eating pot noodles, I don't know. Whatever I'm eating at the time. So I'm just gonna go back, look at all the footage, hopefully put together maybe half an hour, 40 minutes of a yearly highlights. Hopefully it's highlights, but I'll look and see what we can do. We've had a few guests as well. I'll bring some of them into it. And hopefully I can make a video for you just to thank you all for supporting me this last year on my new venture, which is my YouTube channel. We've just passed 6,000 subscribers. So for someone just like me, I go out filming myself. I do all the editing, I do everything myself. And just to have over 650,000 views in my first year, or nearly 700,000 views, 6,000 subscribers, and for you guys to enjoy my videos, pretty much means everything to me at the moment, because the last year, that's what I've thrown myself into, is doing these videos for you guys, and you seem to like it. And as long as you keep liking them, I'll get out around the world but especially on Chesil Beach, the Bristol Channel, fishing for you. And hopefully, as I like to say, together we are learning, because I'm still learning every day, even though I'm a coach. And we may have a good time, and you never know, I might actually catch us a few fish. So my name is Wayne. This was 2022 best or highlights reel from my YouTube channel. Thanks everyone. Happy Christmas and a Happy New Year. Heading up the west coast in the morning to find a place Where no one knows our faces or our names don't leave now in mind, never make it out of life. Plans are changing, rearranging. 
There's fish feeding off the top here. I've got fish actively feeding. Don't know why I'm whispering, but I just feel like you need to. But yeah, definitely fish in this area. This is a beautiful little corner we used to fish when we were kids. It's nice and deep. I don't want to speak too many fish, but I'm going to try and get out. Up the top. Oh, that's nice. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm in. Oh, look at that. I haven't caught a fish out this river for 25 years and I've just caught a lovely little trout. What you've got to do before you touch these fish is wet your hand all right, and then be gentle. But look at that. Look at that little chap. What a beautiful fish. I mean, yes. Oh my God. Yes. That's a beauty. I hope you've got that on camera. It may be raining. I hope you got that on camera. This little chap come flying out the water as it hit my lure. But there you go. There's another beautiful little trout. Obviously I'm soaked, the fish is wet, so don't worry, I'm not harming it. But yeah, what a fish. Let's get this chap back. As you can probably gather, it's absolutely hammering down. So I'm just... Get in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm really pleased I got that on camera. Since I changed the drop shot and I'm getting a bite every cast, so I'll leave you on. I've just cast it out. Loads of movement. Obviously, I just had someone swim through my uh, area. That's definitely spooked the fish because before I was getting a bite every cast. And now I'm in. Yep. I'm in again. It's my first fish on the drop shot this holiday. I've had everything on. Oh, you little git. It took me in a. I got him. I'm just going to bring him straight in. These little gits just take you for the rocks. Oh, it's like a wrasse thing. Oh, nice. It's a different sort of wrasse. There's loads of fish here in Dubrovnik. As you can see, I've got a drop shot and rig. And it worked a treat, first cast. I want to get on that edge. See that, see that line of rocks? I want to try and get over that. So I need to cast along the edge of it. I was winding in really fast just a minute ago. I'm in. Oh my God. Fucking hell, I'm going to get spooled. Oh my God. What the hell is this? It's loads of line. I don't think it's massive. Smash me though. Come on, son. <laughs> what more fun can you ask for? I just dropped it. Look at it go. It's an absolutely stunning fish. Some sort of bream stroke trigger. Looks more like a gilt head style bream, but what a beauty. Let's get this one straight back. Look at that. What a stunner. Look at her. Morning, Are you all right? Yeah, well, here we are again. First light, Chesil Beach, not much has changed. First cast, totally stripped within seconds, so what I've done is I've kept back a packet of squid. Yeah, it's gone a little bit pink now, but that doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do this morning, as you know, it's my favourite time on the beach. And any other time without these little bream and crab, I'd be all over it now. You know, as you've seen before, I could get like, you know, I could have half a dozen fish in the first hour, makes a session, makes a drive home worthwhile and a little less painful. No, I don't live very far, but you know what I mean. So yeah, I've got some squid. I bulk out the baits. I don't know what I've forgotten there. Probably 15 squid. 
I've got two packs of black left. I'm just going to bind them up, get them out there, change the baits probably every 10 minutes. And once all the baits has gone, that's it. That's another session over. It's not been sustained for very long, so the water's still crystal clear. There's one there. Let's put that in sort of 60 yards in the gutter, as we call it. we well, just past the gutter. Yeah, some beautiful fish out there, mind. Don't ever neglect 30 to 60 yards on Chesil Beach. Slack everywhere. Remember what I said, 60, 70 yards. Don't know what it is yet. Slack me off, eh? Yeah, is there? <laughs> wow. Fish on. A bit of coddling, you know. Whole squid. You just seen me bait at. Uh, I think it's a conger. Well, it could be a nice bream. Could be a trigger. Could be anything. Scrapping, I think it might. Oh, these be a trigger. These be a trigger. Keep coming. What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> a cod. Yeah. Cod on. What have we got here then? A Chesil Beach codlin. Thank you, Mr. Codlin. I've got a bite in the other rod. I'm going to sort that out. As you can see, my left hand rod's pulled right down. Fish on. And it's smashed over, as you've just seen. It's a nice fish. Not sure what it is, eh? Hopefully another cod then. Feels like one. Oh, as I said previously in the video, I had a migraine last night, so I've got a right headache. So excuse the glasses straight away, but the sun's up now and it's hurting my eyes. As you know, I always wear glasses anyway in the sun. That's because I get migraines. Not because I think I'm cool, honestly. Um, but here we go. This is cool, though. Yee! -hee. A pair of chisel codlin. Two in ten minutes. We've got more baits out there. Keep them going, but... Who ever said fish nights? Some of you lot did. But no, jokes aside, night fishing can be brilliant, but... I like it first light. Get into a few of these. Hopefully the bream leave us alone. And we get into the fish. I'm not staying too late, but it's nice to get a few fish here on camera. It makes it all worthwhile. Cheers, everyone. So firstly, anyone who's watched my videos recently, you will know what my first rig is. My first rig is an earth rig, a little bar. That attaches to my shock leader. There's the bar. There's your rolling lead to my snood. Free below the lead. Plenty of movement. Yeah, it's not designed for distance, as we've gone over before but it definitely works. And it's great to see lots of you out on the beach using it, especially the YouTube guys that are now using it. Thanks for watching, guys. Attached to my earth rig are my snood. Then I have my four-way kicker bead. That moves that way, so it's left and right, and it can go up and down. So that gives me plenty of movement. One, two, three. So it's three hooks below. And then all I have on the bottom is a pop-up to a stopper to keep my bait presented nicely on my hook. Well, there you go. Just shy of 12 months making these videos and it's probably the best view in the UK, in my opinion. I hope you agree. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut up and I'm going to let you watch that. And when I see that beautiful sun come up in the morning, hopefully I've got into a few fish. But you know what? It doesn't really matter, does it? For 12 months I've been telling you it's not about the catching. And there is the reason why there. So you ever feel a bit grumpy and you're not feeling yourself and
come out on this beautiful beach, spend some time watching that, and I can 100% guarantee you, you'll feel better when you leave. I'm getting plenty of bites, and this near rod is just slacked right off the one with the yellow line, so I'm just going to tighten it up, see what it does. There you go. There's a fish on there. There you go, slap line. Right, let's have a look at this one. Definite fish on. So what I've gone and done, is got myself hooked into a big conger. <laughs> and it's really grumpy, because it don't want to come in. So I don't know if I'll get this one in, because it's probably going to bite me off. But I should imagine what's happened here is unbeknown to me, I've hooked a pate in and the conger's come along and let the pate in. It's definitely not happy. It might not be massive. Some of the, some of the ones that sort of seven, eight pounds scrap, all right. Just feels like a bit of weight there, that's all. And it's definitely pulling back. If it's a cod, it's a really good one. I should imagine it's a conger. But it's great fun, nevertheless. Light my rod up. He's there, look. Oh, if you watch this, if you can see it, see him pulling down. <laughs> nice fish. He's not going to like it in a minute when he sees my light. I can tell you that for nothing. So what I'm going to do is turn my light off. Let it off a beam. So I definitely don't want to be spooking this fish. The trouble is with these big fish, because I'm only using like 60, 70 pound hook length, they will bite me off if it's a big one. But sometimes you get in it. It might not even be massive, but it's fighting all right now. Come on, Mr. Conger. As I mentioned earlier, if it's a cod, it's a really good one. But I'd like to think it's definitely a conger. So, what you see in front of you is a mighty pissed off conger eel. Firstly, they don't like being wanged in with a hook in their mouth, and secondly, I've got two fingers in his ear hole. But yeah, that's a nice fish. They fight all right. It's probably a double. Well, definitely a double. Not as big as I first thought, but a nice fish on Chesil Beach. Cheers, Mr. Conger, and I'm definitely not kissing that one. Cheers, everyone. Gone crazy here. Both rods are going. My left one just hooped right over. Just when I was recasting, the... there you go. Slap line everywhere. I right, sort this one out. Definitely some weight on here. Hopefully it's another codlin. It looked more like a codlin bite. So many fish at the moment. And a fish are cast. Trouble is, I think what's happening is I'm hooking up to little white in. And they're getting smashed by conger or little pate in, sorry. I don't know about this. Not much weight to it. It's fighting well at the start. So what I've resulted to now is just bringing in bits of fish. Look at that, that's mental. Look at that painting. It's just in bits. It's virtually in half. It's crazy out there. You wouldn't want to live out there, would you? Anyway. I won't put that back. I definitely won't kiss it, but there's something out there and it's pretty scary. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my little home on Chesil. This is my big Lou, and today we're gonna to be a little bit more personal than normal. I'm not gonna tell you about all my problems or the things that I'm not very good at, or I'm not gonna lean on you for support, but unfortunately it's raining. So that means I'm going to have the camera in with me in my shelter. 
which hasn't rained for a while, so it's a little bit different. And secondly, I haven't brought my mics with me. So a lot of people don't use mics. A lot of it is preference. I prefer to use mics. The sound quality is a lot better and I can walk away from the camera, do my casting and still talk to you. But today I haven't got my mics. They've actually gone back to road and they're getting replaced because one of them doesn't charge properly. So there we are. That's my little story and I hope you're doing well. Obviously today you join me back on Chesil Beach. My target today, ready, is for triggerfish. There's been a few caught recently and when I've been out coaching I've seen a few, which is great for me to be out coaching, but it's definitely frustrating when my clients are fishing for cod and I'm like, darn it, there's a triggerfish. But I'm sure I mentioned before, the thing with triggerfish is, if you get one, you probably get five. So it's gonna be famous words, poo or bust. But yeah, I'm in a different area of Chesil today, which you'll see where I am. I'm just <laughs> very rich. More towards Portland end, and I'm gonna have a go. Today I was actually meant to be out coaching for cod, but my bait didn't turn up. So I like to support all the local shops with all my bait, buy my lug, but unfortunately it's quite hard to get black lug all the time. Because I'm out coaching three or four days a week, I've actually got a supplier who sends them down to me. Not all the time, if the shops have got them, I'll buy them from the shops, but because I'm out Monday and Tuesday, it's really hard to get bait. And unfortunately, the downside of that is, sometimes your bait can get lost. So my cod session today had to be canceled. So I managed to get myself some ragworm, which I'll show you. This is some old stuff that I've had for a few days in the fridge, as you can tell. But I've got some ragworm, I've got some squid, and I'm going to pick up some fresh ragworm in a minute. But yeah, so here we go. I'm going to get fish in. I've already had a bite. I put the camera on and it stopped. Typical. But yeah, I've had a bite already. It's probably a bream. So today the bite catch will probably be bream, which is great. I don't mind catching bream, as you know, but hopefully we can get into these beautiful trigger fish. Thanks again for watching my channel and hopefully I can get into a few fish for you. There you go. Obviously my snood's longer than that, but I put them all in. Three perfect little baits, rag tip with squid, just ready for a nice trigger to come along and munch it. You never know, I might get two. You could get none all day and catch two. But there you go. That's what it needs to look like, in my opinion, if you want to catch a trigger. Swimming around just like a trigger. Feels just like one, I'm scared. Hey! Just bumping away. Sounds like a Gernard. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But no, I'll get this little chat back. What a stunner. A stonking bream. The bream are massive today. Let you have a look at this one on my earth rig again. Look at that for a bream. Yes! What a beauty! That's why we went off, alright. There you go. Now that's a nice surprise, eh? I thought it was going to be a trigger fish. It's actually a beautiful bass, a Chesil Beach bass. Fin perfect in the sunshine. But yeah, what a stunning creature. I'll get this little chat back, but that just about finishes it off for me. What a morning session I've had. I don't want to overstay my welcome. It's been a good morning. I've caught a few fish and it's time to get going. I'll come back with a little outro, but thanks again for watching. This is another week on the beautiful Chesil Beach. Looking good. Simply lovely. Mm -mm -mm. Jokes aside though, I know I keep on about it and we talk about 
health, nutrition, and looking after yourself on my channel. There's a reason for that. Me and my wife have got a printing company and we print, I'm telling you a story now, and we print clothing for lots of different industries and areas. I also print quite a lot for fishing and the fishing world. What I've noticed is, if we print clothing for a normal sort of, you know, like a riding school or a work wear, most of the sizes are like medium to large, which is fine. When I do stuff with the fishing world, it's all 2XL, 3XL, 4XL. It's all high-end, <laughs> high-end sizes for the bigger man and lady, obviously. So it just, you know, sometimes I often think maybe we need to look out for ourselves a bit more. When I used to go fishing once a month or even once a week, it's a big treat. So I used to meet early, go for a breakfast, go and get the bait, go out, have a good crack. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this, by the way. It's, it's, it's the reason why I do it. Catch a few fish, stop in the pub on the way home, have three or four pints. That is my ideal day. You know, if I had to pick a day, that would be it. But it's not good for you. And I think a lot of us still do that. And even the guys that fish two or three times a week probably are guilty of not looking out for yourself. Finishing work, jumping in the car, stopping in Greg's. There's other companies like it. McDonald's, you know what I mean? Eating food on the road. But what I'm just saying, maybe take a look at yourself. And if you're like I used to be, doing that all the time, maybe eat a salad. Maybe eat a packed lunch. Make it yourself. Try not to have McDonald's three times a week. Anyway, I'm talking with my mouth full. Let's get back to the fishing. Cheers, everyone. So I've not even had a bite in three hours, <laughs> which is pretty remarkable, really. But we've got tide on our side now. The tide's flooding in. I've just gone to change the bait on this one, and I've got a bit of weight, so I'll put the camera on for you. But yeah, no bites as such. If I got a fish, I'm guessing it's a gurnard, but I've had no bites. Definitely some weight. What have we got? Oh, ha, ha. Wow. What was I just saying? It's completely dead. I've not had a bite in three hours. I wasn't worried because the tide's on my side. As I mentioned when I picked the rod up, the tide's coming in now. Flooding tide on Chesil, pretty much like everywhere else, brings a fish. But here we go, here's our first double shot of the session. Hope for many more. Two species as well. Perfect. There you go. That's a beautiful... Sorry. Obviously I've got a place stuck on the other end. Let's bring the bucket over. Beautiful tub gurnard there. Oh, he's not happy with me. Oh, oh, oh. Get this little chap away. Nice. And this is a beauty. This place is nice. This is a fat place. Oh, here we go. Luckily he's hooked just in the mouth as well. But look at that. There you go. That is a fine Chesil Beach place, everyone. That is a fat place. Spinning around for you. That's what you want. You don't get them in January and February. But yeah, this fish, or well, this little chap's been feeding up all summer. And he's definitely, 
Definitely doing a good job at that. What a fat little dude. There you go, Mr. Place. Right, I'm gonna get all these fish back, all these two fish back. Hopefully, I'll bring you back. We'll get a few more bites and get into a few more fish for you. That's two species on my 24 hours on the mighty Chesil Beach. Look at that. That is definitely the style of place and the stamp of place that I would normally take home. But as I'm here for 24 hours, I let this little girl go, or not so little. Thanks, Mr. Place. As you can see, it started rolling in now. The tide's pushing, and the fish are on the feet, hopefully. There you go. As you can see, I've just come back from putting that place back in the Gurnard, and my left arm rod is slack, and now it's pulling down. There's another fish on. Here we go, everyone. Yeah, I was just walking back up and I seen all the line on the shingle. So I picked it up with my hands to stop it getting buried. And I've got a fish on here now. Oh, hopefully it's a trigger. I checked this about 30 yards out. Oh, no. I think there's a fish, eh? Yeah, there's a fish. There's a fish. It's not that big, though. Unless it's just come up. Something there, but I don't know what to say. It's not fighting. Oh, it's another Gurnard. Wow. I know I've just shown you this Gurnard, but he's playing up to the camera. Look how beautiful he is. Look, I'll get this chap back, but what a fish. Showing all the blue fins. But yeah, cheers, Mr. Gurnard. Well, that was nice. A flurry of fish. Three fish in five minutes. Chisel Beach, eh? Now it's gone quiet again. I thought it would have kicked on from that moment. It's been about half an hour. I've had another cast on each rod and nothing. But yeah, what a Gurnard. Do you see him? He's flailing out. Lovely blue fins. He's a bit grumpy of me. Barking away. Oh, oh, oh. But that place was beautiful. I should have knocked a fillet off it really and kept it and ate it on the beach. But I was just mindful if it stayed in my box for 24 hours, it might be quite stinking and I'd rather let it go than waste it. But yeah, I'll keep going. It's lunchtime now. The tide's rushing in. I think it's five o'clock high water. So I've got about four hours till high. It should really pick up all the way now until high and then pretty much after high, because it gets dark about half seven, eight o'clock, it should fish really well, hopefully. I don't know though. But yeah, I'll keep fishing, keep the baits going in. Thanks for watching, hope you're enjoying it. I'll bring you back soon when we get a bit more action, a few bites. Hopefully I'll be reeling some fish in and making it nice and interesting for you. Thanks everyone, I'll see you in a minute. Yeah, it is the same day, look at it. 24-hour session, 24-hour Chesil Beach. Within the space of about two hours, the wind has got up to about 25 mile an hour to 30 mile an hour gusts. The waves are rolling in. It's gone cold. It's just started to rain. I don't believe it. When I checked the forecast last night, it was going to be eight mile an hour winds, southwest, sunny, all today and sunny tomorrow absolutely perfect to do 24 hours on the beach species comp that is definitely out the window it's like a fine winter's day now 25 mile an hour winds 30 mile an hour gusts straight in the face i just thought i'd show you the seaside because when i was letting you know you were facing me but yeah look at it it's proper bumpy now it's not a problem, it just means that I can't use my earth rigs. I can't scratch around anymore, hoping to catch summer species. After all, it's going to be a summer special. Now it's a summer into winter special. But I'll keep trying. Keep the big baits going in, seven ounce leads, get the rods up nice and high, and hopefully we can get into some bigger fish and make it a good session. Look at that. I'm still here, haven't been blown away. I've got a bite on both rods. I was just watching my right hand rod and it come back nice and slack. So I went to tighten it up and when I looked up, the left hand rod was pulled right round right underneath. So I think I've got a fish on both, which is nice. I'll just brighten up the tips for you. There you go. 
So let's watch the rods for a bit. So the right hand one went slack, so I tightened it back up and it's kind of holding now. And then the left one just pulled right down underneath. There you go. There you go. Right, I'm going to take the left one first. Obviously when I'm filming at night, normally I have you facing the sea. But where it's so rough, all the sea spray will completely cover the camera, so you're side on. I hope it's all right. I'm trying to make the best of a bad situation. <laughs> but I don't think there's anything on here either, I'm afraid. Missed them both. If there is, it's very small. But I had some bikes. Yes. I think I've got a fish on. Could it be a Peyton? Oh yes, we've got a species, what have we got? Oh, we've got a cod, cod on. Woohoo, cod on. I've got my Where's Wally hat on for you. First fish of the night, a Chesil Beach codlin. Beautiful, that is a little chap. That's probably the smallest cod I've ever caught off Jezel. It's a cod, or codling, and it's another species. Right, let's get this little chap back. We're on the fish. We're on the fish, everyone. Cod on. Well, I hope I got that bite on camera. It slat lined me massively. I thought I knew what the culprit was, but look, I've got a beautiful Chesil Beach bass. Thanks, Mr. Bass. That's dinner sorted, but it's fishing crazy. I've got another bite on the other rod. I've had a bite every cast since it's got dark, but there's a nice bass. Cheers, Mr. Bass. Try not to get the shadow on my face. It's hard here. I've got the shelter up. I've got us all hid behind. It's pretty hard conditions, but the fish are on the feed. Cheers, everyone. How you doing? <laughs> Welcome back. Well, you probably guessed it. It's hammering down now. And my waterproof clothing is 50 minutes away in the car. I don't fancy walking back 50 minutes to walk back 50 minutes to sit in this all night. It would definitely fish. It would fish well, actually. As you've seen, it's gone mad. I haven't actually got a rod in the water anymore. I just can't keep up. standard I know and if you see my videos you'll be bored of this little section but I'm just going to talk you through my rig so I have a seven ounce grip lead to a splash down to a hundred pound rig body to a bead a pulley bead a bead a swivel on the worm bait to a 50 pound hook length to a 40 circle the magic circle we've been impressed with them aren't we to a 30j hook hopefully targeting codlin tonight on this beautiful beach it's a little bit early and i've got some let me show you my bait i dug which has gone everywhere by the way like everything i smashed my thermos flask on the way i've had a stinker all right but it's good but yeah there you go there's some beautiful blow lug i dug myself so we've got a chance so my second rod, it's got a fillet of shop bought mackerel. I just popped in fires tackle and high bridge, seen Russ and picked up some fish baits. Now as a rule, normally I wouldn't use them on this beach because I overly 
don't like catching form backs. So there you go, a 7 8 grip lead with a splash down to half a side of mackerel to my pulley rig. But look, as you know, I haven't got my mic, so I can't take you with me. I'm going to walk down, give this a gentle lob. I'll probably only cast this twice in the three and a half hours I'm here. I'll concentrate on the worm one, cast in every quarter of an hour, and you never know, we might get an early Bristol Channel codlin from the shore or a lovely little bass. Look what I've got everyone, I've got a Bristol Channel conga reel. It's not what I wanted, but it's what I got. These little chaps, it's not so little, are running around beating up and smashing these whiting in. As I said earlier, top of the tide, correct. And we're into the fish. But look, there's a Bristol Channel conga. I nearly forgot what it was then. A conga reel. I'll get this chap back. He's not that big, but he's not that small. Put a nice bend in my rod and made it worthwhile coming out. Thanks again for watching my videos. If I don't catch another fish, I'll see you next week. Oh yeah, and someone said I never kiss conga reels. There you go, Mr. Conga. That's for you. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for sticking with it. Good night. Ah. How you doing, everyone? Welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Bristol Channel. For my first rig this evening, can we use some ragworm? Yeah, just get them on. Three or four ragworm at the snood. So on one rod tonight, I'm gonna to use rag. And on the other one, I'm gonna use whole squid. Formbacks, congareel, love ragworm. Bass love ragworm. And up here, because we're higher at the channel, there's a few rag beds. Around this area, a lot of people like using rag for cod. Whereas, as a rule, the rest of the channel, we use blow lug. But tonight, I'm gonna to be using rag. Well, there you go. There's a whole squid with a seven ounce lead. What I'm gonna do with this one is put it about 30, 40 yards. There's actually a layer of rocks below us, probably 30, 40 yards out. So I'm gonna be a bit cheeky and try and get it just on the edge of them and hopefully I might get into a bass, but I might lose a set. But when the water goes back, I'll pick it up, so it's not too hard. It just means I've got to stay and pick it up if I lose a set, but I probably won't. I should be all right. But look, I'm just going to check this one out, and I'll be back. So I was just sorting out that white in, or trying to find it, when Mr Ratty ran off with it, and my other rod just pulled down a bit and come back. I wanted to change the baits anyway, so I picked it up. I've got plenty of weight. It might not be a fish, but I thought I'd bring you back, bring the camera on just in case. But I think I might have a form back. Oh yeah. It's not really doing much, it's just stuck in the mud. Yeah, I think there's a fish there. Just try and get him up on the top. Not me at the moment. Well, there we go. I've got a beautiful form back ray from the Bristol Channel. I've been out a few times to catch you one of them. But yeah, we finally got one. This one didn't play ball, so I had to jump up on the rocks. It come in along the bottom, and as I explained, about 30 yards out, I've got loads of rubble and rocks. I thought he was gonna take me in there, but I managed to bully him up over, and that is a beautiful form back ray. It's quite a decent one, actually. Um, yeah, it's probably about nine, eight or nine. Nice set of back wheels on him. Nice mail, but I'll get him back. But that is a Bristol Channel form back ray. We got one. Anyway, I'll get it back. Cheers, everyone. So what have you found there, Charlie? It's sea fennel. Yeah. And by the name, it really is sea fennel. So it's, it tastes like fennel and from the sea. Like aniseed -y. Yeah, it's got a really aniseed flavour. Very salty, of course. Like all sea herbs, they've got a saltiness to them. But yeah, beautiful. Obviously, Perfect with fish. Obviously, Charlie knows what he's doing and he's educating me as well. <laughs> Don't just go out. <laughs> De definitely not, yeah. <laughs> and just think, that looks like something after watching this video, because you might get yourself in trouble. Yeah, um, no, you don't want to be doing that. So obviously, before you go out foraging, make Check. sure you know what you're doing. Yeah. 
100%. But yeah, that's the first bit. First bit of forage, yeah. So what else are you looking for, Charlie? Seen some samphire on the on the fleet there, so I've done that. I picked that before, and it's beautiful. Samphire is great, um, very salty. Got this sort of um, it's, it's it's like a sort of a bursting of, of liquidy, salty water inside, which is amazing. Um, and actually, some sea purslane, which I saw on the um, just next to the the just before the samphire. Right, let's go and have a look. Yeah. So this is all the sea purslane, and then you can see just in the horizon, you've got the Samphire as well. That's actually when the, the tide comes up, that'll be covered in water. And then the, obviously the, the samphire will be covered. That's why you have that sort of liquid inside. So this is sea purslane. Lovely. They're all quite similar, but they've all got their own sort of different textures, different tastes as well. And this one's a bit more bitter and um, and still salty like the other ones. So would you generally use them on fish or just yeah, fish I mean, or meat as well? Meat as well, we've used it with meat because they have that saltiness and obviously meat go, you can season anything with, with salt of course. So yeah, it works, works really well with meat, but it's going with the sea. Why yeah, not put it with the fish? Definitely. It's, it's great. It's a bit yellow, but it's probably been damaged with the sun a bit. But. Yeah. Nice bit of fleet mud. Yeah. For a bit of flavouring. <laughs> Nothing better. Natural taste. Bit gritty. We'll have to wash it. <laughs> so but would you wash it in seawater? Yeah, or? I mean we've got the sea there, so we can yeah, yeah, that's fine, we yeah. can wash it directly in the sea, but at home you can wash it obviously just in your tap or whatever. Yeah, it's Brilliant. perfect. Just right for cod. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Was a bit surprised with the cod, but watch out, look above your head. Right on time. Bugger me. So we've had a couple of taps on this rod. Any weight? Mm, not really. No. It's a bit, but yeah, nothing. I wouldn't have thought it's fish. A lot of weed. Yeah, there's a fair bit of weed about still. So it's another tip, um, what I was explaining to Charlie, especially someone in his position, or like a lot of you, we all haven't got time to come down here all day, have we? No, exactly. So yeah. when we're here, we need to maximise the time we're fishing. So as before, we've got a spare rig ready, all baited up. So now he's just wound in, get this one straight on, and we're away. So we're spending the whole time fishing. If we were to sit down now, bait up three hooks, you know, it's 10 minutes. Yeah. We were hoping for a mackerel or green. We haven't actually tried for a mackerel. We'll get for, as we call it, the luxury of a cod. It's cod only. <laughs> and the height of summer. <laughs> we're not going to go hungry, are we? No, definitely not. Yeah, so. so you need to work all the way around the fish. You go along the back, along the belly. And then as soon as you've worked all that off and the fillet's pretty much off, then you can start to take off Look at that, yeah. each, each fillet. So here you're doing both sides first. Yeah. That's definitely a tip for you, everyone, because I see a lot of people doing it, and granted, I used to do it myself. Yeah. As you get excited, you fill it off one side. It's amazing. And then your second one looks like someone's just cut it off with a, I don't know, a <laughs> stick. Hacksaw. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's, it's three minutes and star, but... It's what it is. It's good. It's all right. The fish is still warm, which is strange. That's some nice fillets, mate. Hang on, let me get the last bit. No, that's all right. Gee, that. I'm not too bad with that. And this one will just then come off as well. Just finish off the belly. Look at that. Yeah, 
fine chisel beach cod and they look perfect, like you say. Yeah, it's not too bad. It could be better, but... No, it's fine. So as you can see, the lemons are on. Yeah, the lemons are on. Get a good char on them. Basically want them to be burnt. And then this is the fish. All my herbs, got mint in there, rosemary, thyme. Really give them a good smash over the over the fish to get all the flavours out of them. And then just directly on the on the barbecue. Here that is red hot. Yeah, nice. Chisel beach cod. Mm. So if you just remind everyone what you forage here. Yeah, so this is the sea person here. This is the samphire. And if I can get a piece. Where is it? There it is. This is a sea fennel. Beautiful. My favourite sea fennel. Look at that. There you go. That's what you want. Burnt like that. And trust it. It's, it's, the wind is getting that hot, isn't it? Yeah, do you want to move it? I just want, don't want the, I don't want the fish to be burnt. Lovely. These herbs I'm literally just going to put into my salad, into my yoghurt. Keep it fresh. Bit of sea fennel. That wind is definitely getting that barbecue up. It is, isn't it? It's roaring. Red hot. The sun fire. It's definitely quite romantic, Chesil, this evening for two guys out fishing <laughs> yeah. and cooking. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's a bit of a date, I think, isn't it, Wayne? Yeah. <laughs> a bromance on the beach. Yeah. Still fishing. Oh, look at that card flaking. That's nice. So how long would you cook that for, mate? Literally just, that was a couple of minutes. You cook 80% on the, of the fish on the skin side and then just finish it a couple of minutes on the, on the flesh side and it will just, that will just flake yeah, away. And because, yeah. because it's so fresh as well, you want to leave it a bit pink. So it's just, it is still a bit pink in there. And that's going to continue cooking as well. But I mean, you could eat any fish from, from Chesil yeah, sure, straight yeah. off raw, so. Yeah, it's not a problem, is it? Definitely keeping the fish pink is, is the way forward. That's brilliant, mate. There you go. Beautiful. Cod with a cucumber salad, yogurt, capers, and forage sea herbs. Beautiful, well done, mate. I was just setting up the camera. I've got a bite on my right hand rod, I think. Look at now. Here we go. I've not even got the mics out. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. How you doing everyone? Well, here we go. That was a bit crazy, had a bite first cast, as expected though. The state of the tide, we should get fish now for about two hours, then it might settle off, so we're about four hours from high now. We have fish for the first two hours, it'll probably drop off then to a high water, and we should get into some more fish. But my name's Wayne, this is the Bristol Channel. If you like your sea fishing, then maybe, just possibly, this is definitely, I don't know where to go with this, this might be the video for you. Could have a fish on here. Yeah, I've got a fish on. There we are. There we go. A Bristol Channel codlin, just like that. What did I say? Form back ray, codlin on the whole squid. What a little beauty.
but a fish for sure. I've got 90 pound hook lengths, but I'm still going to take my time because you get some nice eels up here. I'm not sure this is a massive one, but it could be. Bite after bite after bite at the moment. Right, I've got the lead. It's a conger, as expected. It's a nice fish. I've got him right in the kisser as well, that's all right then. Hello, <laughs> don't be grumpy. I'm not gonna hurt you. A conger eel. Oh, a lovely job. But that's a conger eel. That's free fish and free cast. I've even missed a bite as well. This guy isn't very happy though, look at him. Hello, hello. Let's get him back. Go on, darling. Off you go. Thank you. Here we go, look. I was just thinking about packing up and I've got another white in. That's what we call a pin white in, means it's very small. So that is a very small white in, also known as a pin white in. Let's get this little chap back. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Norway. It's five o'clock in the morning and we've got the law rods out. And the fish. And there we go, look at that. It's a nice fish. Oh, little beauty. Oh, my hands are froze. And there we are. Turn my headlamp off. And there we are. The sun's coming up. It's frosty, but we're into some cod. Thanks, Mr. Cod. Look at that shad hanging out of his mouth. Absolutely perfect. Ooh, get this one away. Right in there, it wasn't coming off. But there you go. Norwegian gold, the beautiful cod. Thanks, everyone. Right. Go and get big. Don't do that to me, mate. It's coming now. I'll bully him in here, aren't you? As you can see, it's an absolute beautiful morning and we're on the fish. We're just at low water and now's the time to get into a few of these beautiful things. Thanks, Mr. Cod. And there you go. Welcome to Norway, everyone. Frosty, sunny, but a few fish checked in. I've done the rubbish bit and showed you the bite and then this fish pulled out so I had to just hit it and I didn't get time to put the camera back on but there was a fish on there another Norwegian cod well, I think he's for Norway I don't really say anything but yeah there's a cod we're catching cod and we're cod fishing winning thanks everyone I'll try harder and get a bigger one for you Cheers for now. As you can tell, I'm obviously still here. Day two, that is the end. We're all falling asleep on our feet. We're actually trying to work out how we can get out of going fishing tomorrow, which is different, I know, but we're gonna try and have a day at the lodge. Sort our stuff out, sort the reels out, make a plan for next week where we're hopefully going up on the halibut. And for people who don't know what they are, they're just massive flounders, and I mean massive. Anyway, that's another video. Thanks for watching. This is Norway, everything's frozen. We're gonna get back now, get some sleep, and I'll probably see you tomorrow. Cheers, everyone.